graduated from that madrasa. Sheikh Mahmoud Masoom, the grandson of Sheikh Umar Ziauddin, was the last of the spiritual lineage, was born in Biara. He studied Islamic sciences under supervision of the most distinguished scholars of his time. Upon completion of his studies, he was granted a certificate of Mutaras of Islamic Sciences, Teacher of Islamic Sciences, in 1942. Sheikh Masoom left this world at the age of 92, leaving his loved ones, his followers, and Muslim Ummah with great loss. In 1991, Sheikh Masoom migrated to the United States, and here he lived a life of piety. He was scholars of scholars. I personally have witnessed the scholars come and visit with him and benefit from his knowledge and his role model of perfect role model of Sharia and Tariqa, which is the Sabbath. In the end, I want to <clears throat> close by saying that the Naqshbandiya Foundation focuses to serve Islam and focus on the sabbath is to decrease the misconceptions and the stereotyping among Muslims and non-Muslims. It's shameful for Muslims to forget their heritage and the contributions of these great, great scholars to Islam. And I think our job is to remind ourselves and educate ourselves as to our heritage. We are very fortunate and awesome to introduce the scholar. We have a great scholar among us and inshallah we will benefit from his knowledge. I want to really thank you from the bottom of my heart that you have come from different directions to honor our great Prophet, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was Prophet of peace, mercy, and love. And you celebrate the Mulukdun Nabi conferences all over the United States without fear of anybody. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Defend the honor of your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and sing his praises in different languages, in different colors, in different fragrances. Allah Ta'ala bless us. Allah Ta'ala give us courage and himma and tawfiq to serve the Islam and the Muslims, Muslim Ummah. Thank you very much. Jazakallah, Dr. Mirza, for that uh, introduction to Naqshbandiya Foundation. Uh, this brings us to the highlight of our evening. I'd like to introduce to you Sheikh Sayyid Muhammad bin Ayya al Husayni al Ninawi. Sheikh, Yaya, Sheikh Sayyid Muhammad bin Yahya al Husayni is a great great grandson of Sayyid Ali Nadi al Ninawi, whose family descends from the southern Iraqi village of Ninawa, the place where Imam al Hussein was martyred, a partial area of, of which is now modern day Iraq, is known as Karbala. Sheikh Muhammad was born in Aleppo in Syria, the northern capital, in 1389 Al Hijri, in a family who maintained its religious and honorable Quran and Sunnah traditions. Sheikh Muhammad is a descendant of the noble Prophet Muhammad and his descendants, and from the family of Imam, Imam Hussein. He began to study under the family of his father, Sayyid Yahya, memorizing the glorious Quran and acquiring knowledge in many of the Islamic disciplines, including Aqida, Fiqh, Hadith, and Ihsan, with the jazas or licenses to teach. He particularly specialized in the fields of Hadith and Tawheed. He attended Al Hazar University in Cairo, Egypt, at the faculty of Asul Din, the School of Hadith Sciences. In addition, he was under the tutelage of many scholars of Islamic jurisprudence and thought of this century and in the past century, who resided in Syria, in Medina, in Mecca, in Tangiers, in Fez, in Rabat, Egypt, Sudan, and in Jordan. 
Sheikh Muhammad along with Sheikh Ahmad Darwish have been trying to provide the first interactive Islamic university over the internet. While utilizing technology yet preserving the Sunnah tradition of Talaqi, which is mouth-to-mouth -mouth transmission of knowledge. Through interactive video and audio and conferencing, leading to generating knowledgeable male and female Muslims to lead the Ummah through genuine teachings and adherence to the Sahih and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sheikh Muhammad and Sheikh Hamad Darwish are also launching the first of its kind, the American Islamic University, an academic Islamic teaching system based on Talaqi and Ijazah in teaching and in knowledge. Sheikh Muhammad is an Imam and Khadib at Masjid al Madina in Atlanta, where he delivers Friday khutbahs and gives weekly majalis in uh, Hadith and in Tawheed. Sheikh Muhammad is dedicated to the promotion of traditional and authentic teaching of Ahl Sunnah, Wal Jama, bringing about moderation and open mindedness, and reviving the Sunnah by increasing people's understanding of Islam. He participated in many national and international conferences on Islam, world peace, and welfare of humanity. He has authored many books in the sciences of Tawheed and Hadith in Arabic, some of which have now been introduced into the English language. He delivers weekly khutbahs which can be viewed online and participates in many national and international conventions. His work of Dawah has led him to extensively travel in the Western world. We will welcome you any questions uh, that you may have after the lecture is over. The plan is, is that the Sheikh will, will give, deliver his talk, we will break from Maghrib, and after we're done with Maghrib, we will have a question and answer session. We will have some volunteers uh, moving around in the audience with, with little index cards. If you prefer, you can write your questions on the index cards and bring them forward and we will re relay the questions out. Or if you choose, you can ask the questions to the Sheikh directly yourself. Without further ado, it's my honor and privilege to introduce to you Sheikh Sayyid Muhammad bin Yahya al Dinawi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. May Allah forgive me for the elaborate introduction that my beloved brother did, which I'm not really worthy of. But that's his husn dhan in me. Qala Allah al-Azim fi kitab al-Kareem ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul innama ana basharum mithlukum yuha ilayhi. An ayah, part of uh, a long ayah, actually. The meaning of the ayah, or the general meaning of the ayah, is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. And again, I would like to encourage you and myself when we hear the name of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we're not shy about loudly saying, "Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi." This way, you can remind the one who's next to you if he's not really making salah and salam on him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As you all know, because there are many narrations indicating that someone who hears the name of the Prophet وسلم, while not making salah and salam on him is among those who is at a great loss. Now, the ayah indicates that Allah Jalla Jalalu, who is telling the Prophet وسلم, says, Qul, say, Innama ana basharun mithlukum. I am a human being like you. Bashar mithlukum. I am a human being like you. Yuha ilayhi. I receive wahi. Let me try to introduce the ayah in a little bit of a different approach. Things in this world that we see and conceive usually have two sides to them. A side that's apparent and obvious and the side that's not apparent and obvious. I'll give you an example. You say this is not philosophy here. When you look at the sky, you see the sky, you look at the sky, the sky gives you a bluish color. If you were to say the sky is blue, that's only using the apparent side. You're not really using the non-apparent, the non-obvious side, which is knowledge that tells you the sky is not really blue. The sky is black, but due to the presence of gas around the sky, around the uh, around Earth, it gives it that bluish coloration. The point is, you have a side that is understood and capacitated by the senses.